Or are you just gonna leave a black army randomly in the sea? Oh, go on then. I'll kill that. Haha. <laughs> okay, Phoenicia has a huge navy and it's over here attacking the last city or couple of cities of Greece who appear to have a bit of Italy. Doing quite well, actually. Really pushing in now. If I can take a couple of cities from Hungary and then start pushing into Poland, I'm gonna feel so much better about what's going on here. I still think Babylon is incredibly scary and he's probably going to win the game before I can even get to him. But I think if I can take Rome and unify Italy as Byzantium and push the borders to encompass Poland, Hungary and Italy, well, that's got to be a good start. That's got to be a good start that we will be happy with if we can do that before Babylon wins. I am still very tempted to go after the Ottomans as well, but if we do that, we're going to get wrecked. So maybe maybe we'll think of doing that as a bit of a last salvo. And don't get me wrong, the idea of a united Turkey under Byzantium, it does appeal to me, but this extra purple of Rome? No, 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 we can't have that. We can't have that. So the World Congress ends and we can no longer build units at double speed. Alas, however, I might be able to culture bomb. Eh, a little bit effective. Should we generate more grievances for the hell of it? <laughs> I feel like that's what the AI is going to vote for here. Yep, we get both of those, but that's fine. Nationalism is here. I need to find a way to deal with this Phoenician Navy, but I've just realized now I can combine boats up and fight them. Oh, at their own game. Yes, this is good. I don't want to do this with every unit, but if I can start combining promoted units with unpromoted units, we're going to have a bit of combat power. A lot of extra combat power. Bam. Rome doesn't actually follow my religion, so we need to be a little bit careful here. This encampment is destroyed. This hussar can be killed if I'm delicate enough. There we go. It's a large part of Hungary's army dismantled that turn. Excellent stuff. I think we're now going to go for natural history because I want to unlock zoos because these give us another three unit as well as tons of happiness which is kind of just as important. Managing to push down the Nile now which is good because it provides pretty much an infinite source of era score. Not that era score really was the limiting factor here but it kind of is and bam we're now taking cities from the other Egypt as well even better Tagmar is so powerful I mean don't get me wrong I'm looking forward to the point where I can make them obsolete but yeah they've been a lot of fun so as the world congress sorts itself out you will be able to start seeing that people are going to start earning profit points again which is really really handy there's a lot of golden ages here I want religions to appear I specifically want religions to appear in nations that I am about to conquer or that I've already religiously converted because those ones will be the easiest to convert that myself. Macedon wants a religion, do you? Ah, uh, I got you. This Egypt. If this Egypt can get one, that would be awesome. Every time I see a hussar that I can kill, I literally go, hussar. It's a big moment. It's always a big moment and just spreads religion further and further. So we've killed this campus as much as we're going to. And my question is, as I mentioned before, do I get the boost to ballistics for the fact that Poland has built the forts for me? Yes, I do. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we have curasars. Oh, Oh, yes, 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 yes. Right. Now I need to just switch my government around a little bit. It, I mean, it, it's easily worth paying 400 gold now just to get rid of retinues and to put in professional army because we're going to absolutely upgrade everything we can. Everything we can. We want a combination of upgraded and unupgraded troops everywhere we go. This thing, 74 strength. This is going to attack like an absolute hammer. And I'm tempted just to push on. Like go military science now, which is siege tactics, owning two trebuchets, easy enough to do to universities easy enough to do and then to go refining into combustion why not i think i might liberate to Sivia. <laughs> No, no, no. Let's see if we can pull this off. There is a fleet here and I want to get rid of it. One attack, two attacks, followed up by a melee attack. Go on, do it. Oh, so close. Actually, I can just move this unit around and get the kill, can't I? Amazing. We're actually fighting back the Phoenician Navy. Not everywhere, but in my home territory. Standing together, which is really, really cool. Let's just buy a second trebuchet. Oh, I can't do that because I've got nitre at the moment. Interesting. Do I sell my nighter briefly? Is it worth doing that? Let's see if anyone wants to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> they probably don't because Niter is such an old strategic now. I'm so far behind the tech 
curve, it's ridiculous. Uh, Google Pro kind of wants to buy it. Go on, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. There, now I should be able to get away with purchasing a trebuchet. There you go. Now I get the boost to Siege Tactics. I'm earning 12 Nighter per turn. So it's no longer as big a deal as it used to be. Another city falls to me. We continue spreading our religion. Don't forget, there is a religion over here in the city of Medina. It's not particularly protected. 1,600 following a religion is only about ooh, six kills. We'll take that. We'll take that. Now, there is certainly an argument to not upgrading every single one of my Tagma. They do, of course, have the ability of giving plus four combat strength to all units within one tile of them. So if I keep a couple around, but upgrade a lot to Curasars, then the Curasars themselves will be more powerful. But the way I look at it is this. A Tagma that's boosted has 54 strength, whereas a Curasar has 64. So already we're 10 higher than even the boosted amount. And if I make a core out of these, we're on 74. So the power creep is pretty commendable. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty big compared to it. So I'm tempted to continue upgrading. I might keep the odd Tagma around, but I'm not really going to plan on doing it like that. Curasar cores. Those are what I'm going to really be trying to work towards. And you can see all through here, we've got level two Curasars. I'm about to core up with unpromoted as well, which is even better. I like that. Pulling these ones out of danger, coring up. Might take me a couple of turns to get everything promoted, but we are now getting there. If anything, coring every unit, it might bring my army strength down a little bit, but it means I've got a lot less units to move around every turn. And that in itself is <laughs> really, really helpful. I have so many units and turns are taking a long time, like a long time. Not that that's an issue, but yeah, anything I can do to just like pull that back a little bit is very useful. Oh, it's always really fun when my opponents really start to struggle against everyone. Pest was just taken by Rome. We're starting to really push in on them now and Greece just got conquered. How? Oh, by Phoenicia. Oh, I love that. They were like, okay, we're going to raise the city rather than letting Ursa take it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cruel. All right, well, that does leave me a slight issue because I was going to use that city to spread the religion into the heel of Rome and then go from there. We might not be able to do that unless we start taking out some of the Phoenician units in combat over here, which I can do. But Mushkin, you're going to need, you need a little bit more power here. Come on, where is my navy? I mean, my navy is pretty much, it hasn't been sunk, but it's been kind of scattered and pushed around as Phoenicia have really bullied it. Clint reborn, I need you to gather all of the troops so we go down here and we need to fight back. Sink this Phoenician navy. Let's push ourselves away and out of our own lands. Actually, at the moment, my navy is just beating up Jerusalem, which probably isn't what they need to be doing. Let's bring my navy, Dr. Bobby, Arby Hedge. Yeah, everyone needs to now just sort of come over. Zaf, you as well. We're going to start to assault Phoenicia. They have to go. The naval powerhouse that is Phoenicia is causing me all sorts of problems in the Mediterranean, and I can't let them stand. If I'm going to actually control Rome, we're gonna have to break Phoenicia and they're not gonna let me through. Oh yeah, this is the strength difference. Look, the Tagma's got 80 power, but this Curacao core, 97. Yeah, we're gonna dismantle walls now. Dismantle walls. I'm making a lot more care now to be pillaging gold and faith as we're going through because every gold pillage is like two and a half units of upgrade, which is really, really good because I need all of these upgrades where I can get them. See, look, ah, oh, winged hussars. Even my Curacao's are gonna struggle to fight against these. How's the religion going on this city? It needs quite a lot more, so we're going to have to kill a few more units in order to actually push through here. Interesting. Very interesting. Still though, we're pushing down the Nile. This will be my land soon enough, and the closer we get to the source of the Nile, the closer we get to the holy city of Medina, and another plus three on my taxes, which I really would like. 154. Babylon is on the moon. Yes, don't worry. I haven't forgotten about that. There's just nothing I can do. <laughs> oh no. Arby Hedge says, get out of here, Phoenicia. Don't approve of your navy being here, nor does Zaf back off, friend. So we are slowly now clearing the seas of this influence, but yeah, Phoenician navy is massive. How much is it at the moment? 2,200. Yeah, it's pretty much the biggest navy in the world. I'd say probably even bigger than my own, which is scary and horrible to admit. Don't worry about it. We'll split off this tiny navy that's now shooting down the Nile. That's all we 
need to do. It's fine. How's the loyalty going down here? Minus 16 that city. Oh, lovely. Better bring someone forward. I'm using Armani for loyalty. That's not a good use of Armani at all. But we're doing we're doing fine. Especially when we've got 101 Curasar attack. Look at that. Bam. The walls just come tumbling down. Go on. Finish off Macedon. My greatest foe. They're gone. Alexander is gone. We did it. We unified Macedon into Byzantium. It is but the first start of many. And, oh yeah, that spread my religion over to Rome. Oh, 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 oh. Well, that's nice. That's very nice indeed. I don't think our conquest is going to stop here. Rome very much is on my agenda. I am still building more hippodromes. Everywhere we go, it's more happiness, but more importantly, way more units. And you can chop them out. All of this wood is going. I'm just like, chop, 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 and more chop. Oh, that was 99 damage on Zaf. <laughs> Oh, hang in there, soldier. Hang in there. Oh my god, you have one, one health out of a hundred. Phoenicia really is just an absolute pain. Please go away. Luckily, Zaf can hide and give themselves a level four promotion, but still, that was scary. Plus six intel on opponents from Phoenicia there. I think we're being spied on. We need printing. We need to get our own spies up and running now because this combat strength is starting to negate quite considerably my wonderful bonus from having tech. Access. I can't allow people to negate my bonuses, you know? We need to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Oh, how did that not kill? Come on. Memphis taken. Another city falls. I'm praying in more units on the front line to just do a little bit more pillage. Is that the last city? I think it was and is, you know? You know, I don't think I'm going to be going to war with Fez, Geneva, or Hattusa anytime soon, and science is something that I'm really starting to struggle on. We are picking up campuses as I conquer, so what I'm going to do is put Diplomatic League in. Now, Professional Army, was a Religion, Press Gangs, Raid, all of these cards can't come out of my government at the moment. I might put Liberalism in instead of Public Work, seeing I'm using all of my faith on army. The Diplomatic League means that I can go one, two, one, two, one, two into all three of those city-states and give myself one library, science, and two university science a few times. Now, it's not a huge difference at the moment, but I am really starting to build up my scientific infrastructure. I think that's going to pay off immeasurably. Most importantly, if I never conquer or take the city-state over, I never take suzerainship of them, they'll never declare war on anyone. So I think they'll be relatively safe. Yeah, look at this, like universities we are fixing now everywhere. More Phoenician ships, they are again doing the thing where they are just isolating themselves one by one. And when that happens, we can strike just circling my ships round. One, two, three, take the kill. Yes, every ship we bring down is a victory for Byzantium. We want the sea to be purple, but not this purple. This, this is too pink. No, this purple over here, no, that's far too dark. No, this is the correct purple. We wouldn't bring the entire world into war just because of the color of a purple, would we? Would we? Oh wait, yep, no we would. <laughs> <laughs> we absolutely would. Mushkin, you're now a core. Congrats. Rome denounces me. Hmm. You can do that if you like, Rome. I won't spare you. Not when I can see such a weakly defended city. Oh, annoyingly, they've actually embarked a bunch of units around their seas so that I can't get in easily. They know what they're doing. Gilgabro wanted to break the friendship there, but I'm not letting you go. No, 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 no. You're my forever friend. Whether you like it or not, Ottomans still won't join any more wars with me. Ah, very annoying that. I need you involved with Phoenicia, but no, they're not going to. I think it's worth the gold here. Gonna buy another university. Bam. Printing. Plus three combat strength with everyone. We're now up to military science. Then after that point, rifling. Refining. That'll give me battleships. Let me discover where oil is. Then we'll get artillery. Then we'll get tanks. And we are just focusing on science pillaging wherever we can get it because these pillages are more than a turn of science every turn. It sort of makes sense, right? <laughs> it's a more than a turn every turn. Oh, Buddha, 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 Buddha. Oh, hello. Hello there, Buddha. Are we having a problem with your walls? It's a shame, isn't it? That's a real shame. Who would have thought that someone would have such problems with their walls? I'm pumping out a navy as well. Like, I'm really, really neglecting the infrastructure in my lands, but the troops I can spit out are incredible. Up to 3,000 military strength now. We need more. Considering the scale of the campaigns on this map, we need more. Thebes has fallen. Luckily, we're pushing in. Still spreading our religion. Oh, that's quite a few cities that we spread to there. Pulling closer to Medina. <gasps> Byzantium has four strength in that city now. Oh, goodness. That's, it's indulgent. Bam. 
Oh, did you see that? One hit and the entire walls disappeared. <laughs> that is unfortunate. We just took Colosseum. Oh, that's a useless place. <laughs> but at least we've got it, I guess. Go on, Gilgamesh, bro. Go to war with me against Rome. Oh, don't be that sort of military ally. Come on. Yeah, none of my allies will do that, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. Maybe Spain? No. Do I want to open up another front with Rome right now? I mean, I've got all of these armed units on the border. I'm tempted to. Momentum is key here. Momentum is absolutely key. Fine. I will declare the formal war. I will generate even more grievances with the world. You seek to conquer me before I move on you. I approve. Yeah, you see, look, he, Caesar gets it. Caesar gets it. Now, can I? Nope. Ottoman's still refusing to join him with any wars. I That, I feel, is just really annoying. Fine. I will just, we'll keep an eye on the old diplomacy here. But what I need to do is just kill a couple of units in the field of battle here and start spreading my religion over towards cities like Citia. Rome has a big name navy here. A worryingly big navy, but the good thing for me is that I've got a lot of powerful troops. So my land army is going to run in and wreak havoc here. We'll keep our army on the shore for now, and we do have a navy. The navy is making its way round slowly. We'll get there in our own time, you know, in our own time. I believe this is Cleopatra out of the game. The Northwestern Nile is mine. Now all we have to do is take the rest of it. Speaking of, we're doing well. We're pushing in quite considerably now. Still spreading our religion if we don't forget, we have the religious emergency. I'm going to call it flavor rather than a bug. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a thing that happens and it's causing me to spread my religion every time I take a city. It's wonderful. Discovering more of the land? I suspect this is because the Ottomans has now given me a level 2 alliance and hopefully, oh yeah, of course we can now see the whole map because they have received the map from Babylon. Okay. Well, let's see what we're up against. Poland is currently a bit of a religious wall. They have kept the religion in their cities fairly well and I'm struggling to convert, but it doesn't mean we're not going to be able to. Just means I need to keep probing at this front whilst I undercut them by taking the Hungarian cities to the south. I might be able to move my army through and take it like that. Where is Poland's religion based? Krakow. Here. That's another three combat power. Excellent. The Ottomans have kind of spread into Turkey, but not really. There's a lot of land they could still spread into. Babylon is looking like a beast with an air force. Soon they will get giant death robots, no doubt, but this is kind of what we're planning on doing. I'm planning on taking through Egypt, going through Arabia, and hitting Babylon from the south. I think that's the best chance I've got here. Persia exists on this map. That's kind of all I can give them, really. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying. Uh, Georgia is doing much better. Tbilisi is a religious center as well, but that's much harder to get to. We'll do what we can. You never know. And as we fight through Poland, you can see Poland have actually taken the heart and soul out of Germany. They own Berlin. They own Regensburg, Cologne, Hamburg. Germany, what's happened to you? Gaul and the Netherlands are kind of squished in, not doing much. France, in the form of Magnificence Catherine, unfortunately, has taken over more of Eleanor's lands. Ah. Oh, but Court of Love isn't quite powerful enough to start influencing this area. England, very much trapped in England and Wales. Scotland has taken over Ireland and Northern England. Interestingly, the Netherlands and England are also religious centers. We'll keep an eye on that. Spain, yeah, well, Spain is actually doing very well. They've spread to Northern Africa. They've got pretty much all of Iberia and have pushed into France. And then Rome, well, he's done a semi-decent job of unifying Italy. Not quite, Phoenicia owns Sardinia. No one has gone for Sicily, and the whole heel is unsettled as well. But actually, this visibility means we can see more of what Phoenicia are doing. Phoenician Navy is really annoying. They keep sending these caravel fleets at me randomly, and they keep breaking. Like, I keep, I've got these sort of privateers that I'm sending in. But I'm losing one a turn, roughly. Nothing I can't replace, but it is frustrating, because every time I feel like I've got my Navy in a place where I can counterattack, more of their boats show up. Two military emergency possibilities that could go up. Yeah, the letter. If we can liberate the letter, suddenly I'll have another outlet for faith, and that will be very handy. But there is where the land lies. Score-wise, I'm doing very well. Me, Poland, and Babylon, and Spain. We're the top four. I own by far the most land, and I'm starting to creep up in science now. I'm on 34 techs. We've got Rome with 36, then Hungary with 38, 38, 38, 39, 42, 43, 45. Now Poland is on 48, Spain is on 48. I think Babylon has now maxed the tech tree out. Yeah. 
they will have done. I'm hoping, you know, that they don't have any uranium. That would be the best outcome here. They don't have any uranium. So if, as long as we can guarantee they don't cling on to uranium somewhere, then hopefully giant death robots won't be it. It'll just be planes. Planes will be the worst of it. It might have been glossed over, but military science means that I now have cavalry. Cavalry are just as powerful as cuirassars and they can do a lot of pillage. So we like that a lot. So yeah, flips because I managed to catch an apostle unawares and as you can now see the religion is crawling up the leg of Italy. Nothing can stop it now. Uh, apart from, you know, things that might stop it. That, that might stop it. We're pushing Rome's army back as far and as fast as we can. They keep plowing their own units into mine pretty effectively. That I will not complain about at all. I'm still stealing loads and loads of gold from Hungary, which again, I very much enjoy. Walls come clattering down there and bang, another city falls. That should be a nice little boost of religion. Now we move on to the city of Pex, which I don't really want to let off. I want to make sure that we push the knife in really quickly on this city. Bam, there we go. Walls are down. We can move in very quickly now. My privateer is just gobbling up everything from this city. And do I want to take Buddha now? Is the loyalty going to be enough to keep this city? Or do we just blow up a couple of units and try and... Let's just try and convert a bit more of Poland. One, two, three, like that. Yeah, that's going to start really spreading into Poland's southern cities now. Just opportunities I'm looking out for here. The Ottomans have just about earned a great profit. And if I actually now look at the map, you can see there are a couple of holy sites like Konya. I think that's the only one. So what I'm going to do very cheekily is buy a couple of apostles now. And what these are going to do is dive straight into the Ottoman land as soon as they make a religion and nuke it. If we can destroy it immediately, that'll be another three taxes. And I'm already on plus nine. Medina and the Ottoman religions would put that to plus 15. Now, don't get me wrong. That is very powerful. I don't think it's powerful enough for us to be hitting through 100 strength Babylon walls with planes around, but certainly it will give me an opportunity, a chance, and a chance, a fleeting hope. That's all I need, ladies and gentlemen. Military emergency. Again, we're not going to get involved in this. We're not going to get involved in a city-state emergency. I want a war on my own terms. That is Dido, and it is Rome, however. So what I'm hoping is that either the Ottomans or Gilgamesh will join in with those emergencies. If they do, I will get the alliance bonuses for not from being directly in a war with them, but we'll both be at war with the same person. And that will give me the plus five. Plus five from Gilgamesh's ability, plus five from the military emergency with the Ottomans. It's not a direct way of doing it, but I get what I want either way. No, nobody wanted to fight Dido. That's totally understandable. However, ah, oh, Suleiman and Gilgamesh, no, they stuck out of it. Fine. What are you going to do? Now the emergency's gone, actually. This is a perfect time to go and nip in and take Jerusalem. Just going to quickly slip in there and say, hey, that's mine. And the religion spreads even further around. We're now, yeah, pushing into Babylon, pushing into Arabia. There we go. A religion has formed. The religion of mysteries. Huh. I like that. That's really cool. In fact, a bunch of religions. So the Ottomans got one. Scotland got one. France got one. It might be that Poland does this for us, but we're going to send our apostles in anyway. This will annoy the Ottomans, but hey, if you hadn't realized, they like me minus 27 as it is already. We've got a triple strength converter as well as a 75% remover. <laughs> We're coming for you. I like leading Phoenician troops to their doom by just leaving random builders around. And this has worked yet again because now my frigates from the back lines are starting to arrive. You've left yourself in a very precarious position here. It means that I can get several attacks in with range troops. Just like that. Bam. Frigate wins the day. We take out another fleet. The Ottomans are guiding my way quite nicely here. My navy can just keep moving around piece after piece. Oh, there's a lot of Roman units there. That's not good, but we can get another kill. Delightful. Bam, my frigate just one hit one of theirs because of my obscene combat bonuses. Wonderful. And a couple more unit kills just drive the religion further and further in. Bam, there you go. The breakthrough. The breakthrough has been made. Push, everybody. In we go. People forget with Byzantium that they think, oh, it's all about Tagmas and Drumans and heavy cavalry, but no. Light cavalry can also break walls down as well. And once you physically do get cavalry, yeah, the effects can be pretty brutal. Bam. <laughs> we just spread our religion across to the last Hungarian city and the first Polish city. Oh, that's interesting. These hussars are strong. They keep picking off the occasional Tagma unit that kind of gets left behind. No worries. These are all my weakest units and I haven't upgraded them yet, but just got to be a little bit careful. I want to take Buddha and Pex at the same time. We can do that. I think the loyalty will be good. Oh, this is what I mean. I'll just be mining 
building my business and then another caravel fleet appears and just almost disintegrates a boat in the in, in one hit. Oh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for the day that I can just take out Phoenicia from this game. Oh, so close. We're pushing across to the latter now. The worrying thing is that Phoenicia's military strength has literally been 2,200 this entire time. I don't know what's going on. I do know what's going on. Nothing. That's the problem. It's just sort of sticking around. Oh, City, you think that you can just escape from my clutches, do you? Well, uh, Paula Waller Bear says, how about no? <laughs> how about no? Thing is, you've only got one population as well. So you can rebel all you want. Nothing is going to change. And now my cavalry have arrived. <laughs> a little sneaky attack, a little sneaky attack. Walls are coming down quickly. Let's see if we can undercut Poland's religion from the south by spreading this city. Oh yes. Yes, we can. Two more cities fall and oh, this one's starting to look a little bit ropey now. Isn't that a shame, Poland? Wouldn't that be not a shame if we were to find ourselves in a situation where I was spreading my religion to your city, which is refusing to flip to me? Liberate society. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, there's natural history. We can now get zoos, which is way more happiness and way more three units. Because of course we needed more three units. My army of 3,200 strength is, is, as we all know, nowhere near big enough. I think this should be the first Roman city that we're going to take and hopefully keep with a couple of naval invasion curasars. Yes. Okay, loyalty is pretty terrible, but as you can see, the religion's now spreading quite nicely. In goes the Tagma. That was 87 strength. That's looking pretty nice. And now Setia is under siege already. We're stealing some gold. In everyone gets. Come in. Well, now that I've got natural history, I think the best thing I can do is just beeline to mobilization. Then we can get armies. Armies of curasars. Armies of tanks. Oh, there is a world out there that both of these things exist in. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, that's an Egyptian prophet. How about you put that prophet somewhere? Oh, I think I've taken their only holy city. That's unfortunate. I want you to put a religion down. Hmm, let's see if we can work this out. Would it make sense for me to give like Abydos or Thebes back in a peace deal? Let them make a religion and then wipe it out. No, I don't think it does because I'd still have to then go and invade. And Arabia is going to be a lot tougher. It's plus three combat strength, but it would take 15 turns to then reset the war and in that turn, no I'm not going to do it but that's something I could do if I was feeling more patient that's what I would do I'm not feeling patient <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not. Now that I actually have boats in the Mediterranean, this is so satisfying. Spread the religion. Keep spreading it. Necken must fall if I am to continue advancing in this area. And I'm wondering whether or not I want to be pillaging right now. Or do I just try and take momentum into Babylon? They're so strong. How many districts are there? This is the only campus apart from this one up there. So if I'm going to steal some science, that's what I want. It's got two different pillages on it. My loyalty is being stretched in this area, I reckon probably we need to do more pillaging than I've been doing. Build up a stronger army. Yeah, you know what? Let's actually take the time. Take the time to pillage. Because as I pillage, I can use all of that delightful faith to then make more units. We can just build up a huge, huge army to then go after Arabia. I think that's the better move. There falls the city of Pex. I've brought my unit down from the north to go and take this. I'd rather leave Buddha alive just for a second. Oh, that's an anti-tank crew corps from Poland. Yeah, they're not messing around. <laughs> They can see my cavalry and they're thinking, yeah, how do we stop that? I actually respect that a lot. It's it's heavily annoying, but I do respect it. You can't hide from me, Phoenicia. You can't hide from me. I will find all of your boats and I will sink every single one of them. And Rome has left me about 1,200 gold just sitting out in the fields here. Thank you. It's very kind of you. One fun thing is that my taxis belief actually gives me religious strength as well as military strength. So my apostles are going over to try and snuff out this Ottoman religion. Well, they're doing quite nicely. Means I could also benefit from a debater. I might see if I can just spawn one of those. You never know. Oh, Gilgabro will get involved in my war against Hungary. Ah, oh, they're starting to actually join things now. And the Ottomans will start to declare a couple of wars. This is a good sign. This means that they're becoming more and more amenable to massive conquests. Plus five combat bonus. I don't need it necessarily because I've got taxes, but anything I can get will help. Keep pillaging everyone. Just keep pillaging. 
changing. Everything here must go. Keeping an eye out as well for any good zoo that'll help to keep a bunch of cities happy, but also then produces a free unit for me on the front line. These are great, lovely stuff. I'm building up a huge army in Egypt now. All of my funds, my thief, my gold, it's all being sent over here, and I've probably doubled the size of my standing army. This crossing over to Arabia is going to be pretty tough, but as soon as Medina falls, yeah, that'll be, that'll be good after that point. Thank you for leaving another unit there, and Buddha, I'm just going to go and take this city now to relieve the loyalty pressure on Pex, but also to spread my religion even further. How bad is this? Minus 11, minus 8. Hey, we've actually sorted this out. I can move Magnus now and keep both cities happy at the same time. Gorgeous. Oh, it's good when a plan starts to come together, isn't it? Very good indeed. I don't like the fact there are aerodromes here. I don't like the fact there are anti-tank crews here. But Poland is beginning to become quite dangerous. We knew they had a bit of a tech advantage for some time, but yeah, this is not nice. Okay, the Ottomans are spreading quite a few missionaries out at the moment, but I don't think it's going to be a problem as long as we can catch at least a couple of them. Did I get a debater? No, but I got a medic. Actually, that's really handy. Make your way somehow to the Poland front. Okay, it reckons it's going to be about 10 turns. It's not too bad. I won't bother sending you across in that direction, but yeah, we're getting in closer on Konya now. It's not going to be difficult to knock the religion out of that city. Oh, this plus three. The plus three I'm looking forward to is huge. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. This is the danger of what I've been worried about. So Poland have plus six from Deity Plus Plus. They've also got the plus four from Wars of Religion. They're doing exactly what I'm doing. This is a bad example because I'm attacking into a fort across a river, but they can one hit my Curasars and these are my tough units. Hmm. The city's not far from flipping, but I need a little bit more in this area. We're going to have to probably rush this tank upgrade. At the worst case scenario, it's 20 turns from now. Turn 184. That's, I mean, it's not too bad, but I could use with speeding that up just a little bit, I think. Well, good thing is my units are arriving in Roklo. We're still taking cities from Hungary. That's looking really nice now. Hungary won't be in this game for too much longer. I think we've just about solved the Hungarian problem. Oh yeah, I have no combat power against these cities now, especially because they've all got Renaissance walls. I need to convert more stuff, speaking of. Move you across there. Oh, this land. I tell you what, this TSL map, it's always full of rivers and hills and things like that, but <laughs> the apostles really do struggle to get anywhere. I'm gonna start putting pressure on Georgia as well. Actually, does my military ally want a joint war with Georgia? No, but Gilgamesh will let me join their war. Okay, perfect. That's plus five combat against Georgia. That's huge. I've got a couple of very suspiciously placed units that are just going to start to spread religion over to Georgia because they've got loads of units just in this middle ground. <laughs> oh, yes. And what's this? Hundreds of apostles you're sending across my land? Dear, oh dear. That's a bad and unfortunate thing to happen, isn't it? It's tempting as it is to pillage absolutely everything. I think I might just take this city now just to keep momentum going, keep spreading the religion. There we go. Like all of Egypt's cities now follow my religion. That's lovely. There's always more stuff to pillage. Sometimes you just have to go and find it, you know? Setia falls and now Byzantium has a direct border with Rome. Now it doesn't follow my religion at the moment, but it will. Oh, don't you worry about that. It will. Don't forget as well, settling a city spreads my religion. So just settling this one right on the border with Phoenicia does the same thing. <laughs> It's so cheeky. I'm sure it's a deliberately intended mechanic. Don't think about it too much. I just hit 50 cities, by the way. 52 with 270 population. Nice. Scorched Earth. Remember, whenever you get Scorched Earth, immediately put in Total War because your raid card is gone and I always forget to do that and then I end up pillaging about seven things and not getting the 50% bonus and it's terrible, but then it's all good once you figure it out later. I reckon our war in Rome is most important because Aquilia and Rome both are so close to following my religion now. I reckon this frigate can just tip everything over. Ooh, not quite, not quite, but very close. Well, either way, we've got a bit of a mass invasion going on here. Makurasar can land. Oh, we can't quite kill the bombard, but that is tempting to make a strike on that unit. Just gonna sit here and pillage a second or two. Let everyone come out of the city and attack me. Bring some more units round. And yes, I know there's a lot of frigates in the sea and that's not great, but that's a unit kill. Oh, yep, 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 yep. This religion, oh, we just need to spread 
it. We just need to keep going. Hello, Valletta. Yes, I do plan on liberating you. No, I don't plan on leaving everything unpillaged. Why would I do that? So it's, this is the price of liberate, uh, liberation. Let's, let's call it that, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to be doing here. Actually, we need another melee unit to come in and do some fun things. My gold... Oh, my gold pattern has actually almost disappeared already. This is mad. I've got so much army. 466 gold I'm losing per turn at the moment. Yeah, Varangian Harold doesn't seem like a bad person anymore, does he? I'm going to cause a little bit of chaos. Not that Geneva is ever going to be very useful to me, but I'm going to put my envoys into it and steal it back because now I get a little bit more science. Going to war with Tamir and and Caesar lost me a little bit of science per turn from my city-states and this science is beginning to add up now. I mean, yeah, sure, my pillage economy is strong, but that's 15 science per turn just on those envoys. I like it. Senna falls and suddenly I have access to this new sea. Helps to spread the religion even more. Speaking of, I think Arabia. Yeah, I'm gonna come after you now, Saladin. Gilgabro is up for this. Excellent. Sorry, I mean, Gilgabro and Suleiman, they've both been very, very fun allies this whole game but that plus five combat strength from being at joint war with Gilgabro yeah that's the sort of thing that pays off in the long run and Georgia just couldn't help themselves they're attacking my unit of course they are bam just continuing to spread all of my delicious religion to them oh if you were wondering by the way there's four turns until the end of the renaissance era and I am 143 era score above what I needed for a golden age <laughs> Oh, it might be quite close, you know. Egypt is just the best chomping ground for yields. Absolutely brilliant. Urbanization, we've just raced through that. Brilliant. I've got colonial offices on at the moment because I'm getting three loyalty per turn in every city. That is quite handy. We're getting closer now and closer to mobilization. Then we can make armies, even more difficult units to kill. It just helps them with pillaging. Pillaging is what it's all about. The navy in the Nile is now on its way out. We are now going to join in with our little invasion of Venetia. Speaking of, they've got a couple of units that Zaf's just been clearing up one by one, doing amazingly well. But this city, I can't stand. You settled that just to be really annoying. And it's got a line inventory and it's a city in itself. So if I conquer it, we should get a big religious spread around the minus 27. It doesn't even matter if I don't keep it. It's not the point of that city. The point of it is just to be really annoying. Is that a tactical military use? Just to be annoying? <laughs> Probably not, but that's what we're going to be. And Finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixomatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy's Ursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, Flying Dutch Burbs, Nate the Great, Alex Frost, Joseph Bianconi. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.